Rub up your engines! ABMS says, Scotty, what are your thoughts on a 2023 Toyota Corolla GR? Do you think it'll beat the Honda Civic Type R? I kind of doubt it. The Toyota Gazoo Racing Corolla is going to have a three-cylinder turbo engine in it, and I'm sure it'll be fast, but the Honda Civic Type R is basically a street-legal racing machine. I doubt that the Corolla could come close to that. Honda has been into racing for so long, and that has racing suspension. I've driven them. I don't like the Civic Type R as a transportation car. They ride too rough. My wife got one. She says she's never getting another one. It was such a crappy ride. Bangity, bangity, bang. Knocked the filling out of her teeth, but it's a baby race car. The Corolla could be a zippy little car, but I don't think it'd be anything near what the, the Civic Type R. Vincent Vizzari says, I got a 2020 Ford Fusion 1.5 EcoBoost engine. What do you thought about it? It only has 6,600 miles. I'm not a fan of that motor. And the reason I'm not a fan of that motor is it's a little bitty 1.5 liter engine with the turbocharger and GDI injection. Yes, it puts out enough power but at what cost? It will just not last as long. It's going to wear out faster. In the past, their little bitty 1.5 liter engines wore out faster. I can't see why they're going to be any different the ones they're making now. It's just a cheaper way to get more power and better, in quotes, gas mileage ratings, but you generally don't get what the ratings are unless you drive like a turtle. So you get an EcoBoost engine, turbo and GDI. You step on the gas all the time to go faster. It revs higher and you get worse gas mileage. I'm not really a fan. I mean, but you own it. Change the oil and filter every 5,000 miles using full sun synthetic, that GF6 oil. You never know. I had some customers get 160000 out of one of those engines. Paul Devin says, Scotty got an 03 Lexus GS300. Legs from a stop. Once a few seconds pass, it recovers and drives normally. It's old. It's 19 years old. Start with the basics. Change the spark plugs. Change the air filter. Change the fuel filter. Do my video. Make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. You clean the mass airflow sensor with mass airflow sensor cleaner, you got to use that cleaner. You clean the throttle with throttle spray cleaner, and you might find that it all goes away. Now, it is a V6. Changing those back six spark plugs is a pain in the butt. So look at the front three, and if they're okay, usually the back ones are okay. You could skip that for the beginning. You might have to change them, but try everything else first. The cleaning is easy, filters is easy, maybe that'll fix the whole thing, and you won't have to take the intake manifold off to get to those back three spark plugs. Jim Arucci says, Scotty, what are your thoughts about the 2021? One Nissan Maxima mile per gallon seems decent, but the CVT worries me. The Maximas actually don't have any real problems with their CVTs. A friend of mine just sold his, had 80,000 miles on it. He got more money than he paid for it. Carvana came, didn't even road test it, gave him 17 grand, and away it went. And it had a lot of miles on it. It was still working perfectly fine. The Maximas with those CVTs, they didn't particularly have the problems. It was the cheaper ones, like the Sentras that had problems, the Altimas that had problems with the Jetcos. The Maximas they generally did not have problems with the transmissions in it. So I'm not a Nissan fan. I personally wouldn't buy one unless I got it dirt cheap and then I'd sell it to somebody else to make a profit. But I'm not a fan of Nissan. But it's not horrid transmissions like they're in some of the other ones. Jackie says, I need your help. I put gas in my car and instead of the gas meter going up, it went down. 2004 Mazda 6 wagon. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. It's an 04, so it's 18 years old. Odds are you're going to need a new sending unit in your gas tank. But at least it's a Mazda, you don't have to pull the gas tank off. You can get access it through the back seat, take it out, and then you take the little bolts off, and then you can take it out of the tank and then put a new sending unit in. The sending units go up and down, but they do by a variable resistor assembly, and when they break, they'll often flip and give the wrong readings, and you got to replace it. They wear out over time. I'm amazing they last as long as they do. They're soaked in gasoline, and they're an electronic part, so it's kind of amazing they last as long as they do. But put a new sending unit on it, that should fix it. Sim says, my car jumps. What does that mean? What can I do? Well, maybe it's happy, and it's jumping for joy, or maybe you have a low rider, and it's got hydraulic pistons that make it jump. But if you're talking about it jerks when you're going, there's a lot of things that can do. You start with the simple stuff. A clogged air filter can do it. A clogged fuel filter can do it. Vacuum leaks on the intake manifold. You hear a sucking when it's idling, you find a hose fell off. Things like that can do it. Clean the mass air flow sensor. Clean the throttle. That can do it. Have the fuel injectors cleaned if that doesn't fix it. That can do it. And then pray it's not your transmission going out. Because let's say you got one of those crappy Chryslers with an automatic transmission. They start jumping. It usually means the transmission's starting to go out. And that costs thousands and thousands and thousands. That costs 
customer a little while back have it go out on his Chrysler 300 and man it was like a $4,800 job to fix his transmission so pray it's something simple and not the transmission oh says I'm thinking about getting a 06 1.8 Corolla Verso with 120,000 miles what should I look for if the prices are high there's probably nothing you can do about that but bring a scan tool if you have one see if there's any code see if there's any problems look for wreck damage see if all the wheels are exactly in position put your hand behind the wheel and the back of the fender and if you find one side's got four fingers gap and one side has three the car's been wrecked and crushed in don't buy it pay a mechanic like me to check it out for you you can't trust people selling used vehicles these days you don't know if it's been wrecked flooded stolen all kinds of stuff they're great cars they can last a really long time four or five hundred thousand miles but you got to get things checked out you can't trust people when they're selling used things these days Star Fox says Scotty my control arms are no longer manufactured by anyone can I have bushings from a different vehicle pressed into my OEM control arms or what would be the best option all right well if you could find the bushings that were the same size finding the needle in a haystack almost always somewhere you can find either the control arms or the bushing kits what you want to do is go online and you'll probably find either old stock new or people that have kits that you can use you can't just guess because you know you're talking about thousands of an inch specifications and guess with another one who knows if it's going to fit right or not but you can almost always find them somewhere toddy lomain says must like chinese food hey scotty i replaced the battery in my ford f-150 overnight it drains out and i have to jump start it what could it be all right well you got a dead short in your car when it's turned off it's short in the power i got a video finding battery battery drain on your car watch it I'll show you exactly how to do it you can either do a meter like I do in the video or you get a test light and the light will come on and the meter will show you got to draw then you go throughout the car truck in your case pull every fuse out when the power drain stops you know whatever that fuse operates is where the drain is and if you pull all the fuses and it still has a drain then you got to do stuff like unplug the alternator unplug the starter unplug the computer because they can get drains too but when you find what it is when you unplug it or take a fuse out the drain will go away and then you'll know that's where it is Ford like that once and it was an infotainment system that cost a fortune he just said heck with it I just use my infotainment system and when I park in the car any length of time I just pull the fuse out to it his fuse was inside the cabin so it was no big deal he just pull it out and then push it back in later rather than spend 15 1800 bucks on this stupid infotainment system Osama bin Kenny says hey Mr. Scotty I was wondering what are your thoughts on a 2022 Sienna my son bought a 2021 Sienna hybrid and he loves it because it's hybrid and for a van it gets phenomenal gas mileage and he's had of course no problems with it whatsoever if you get the non-hybrid yes they're relatively gas hog machines it's a van it's big it's heavy and it's got a v6 engine so it's going to use a reasonable amount of gas but the hybrids it's another story now I'm not always a fan of hybrid cars I don't buy a used one with a lot of high mileage but you buy a Toyota it's going to have generally at least 150,000 or more of relatively trouble-free driving so if you're happy with that you don't mind the price the only problem is the price of everything is so sky high now but the vehicles themselves the ones in the past are great I can't see why the 2022s would be any different a western spy says Scotty what kind of metal would you use for chassis strengthening well how much money do you have titanium is really strong and it's really expensive it depends what you want to do and how far you want to go if you're just strengthening you can get some pretty strong aluminum composites that you could bolt on if you've got a decent chassis you might just do stuff like get stronger add-ons like you could put a chassis strengthener for cornering and go from strut to strut they sell those kits for that there's a lot of things you can buy do a little research for your car and see what's available I don't know how far you're going to go you got a guy who can weld you can weld you can weld on whatever you want but a lot of times you can get kits and a lot of the kits are pretty well made if you see other people who have used them get some feedback on the internet from them and not just go out and buy something you know from China and hope it works Austin Lewis says Scotty got a 95 F110 I stripped the distributor gear I replaced it and set the timing it won't run correctly here's the thing you put a distributor in that's a gear right you can put it in many ways it could be that you didn't install it correctly originally now yes you can turn the distributor to set the timing but if the base timing isn't correct it'll never run right so what you want to do is you want to put your timing on top dead center with number one at top dead center number one cylinder then take the distributor out and when you put it back in you want it 
pointed right at the number one cylinder on your distributor cap. Yours is probably off a little, and even though you can get it running, it'll never run right because you didn't have it indexed right in the first place. First you indexed it, then you adjust the timing, so do that, and you should be able to easily do it. You just slap them in and out, they move here and there, you got to get it atop that center, number one, and then when you put the distributor in, you want it pointed where the number one spark plug line comes in on your distributor cap, and then you can set the fine-tune timing after you index it like that. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.